Check. When the boundaries of community are placed in peril, symbolic possibility locate center of the turmoil. Potential your identity, imagination, the sun, origin, the mystery, interconnected, everyone. The best way to build it up would be to first tear it down, reaffirm and remix your perspective. Listen now, open up your mind. I open up a book, open school, got you open eyed here. Look, from the favelas of Brazil to the values of Paris, deserts of Arizona to the outback of Australia, formulating futures, morals, message, the alternative. Voices of the voiceless claim the city with your presence. Yes, going bold, wide, inscribe your identity on surfaces. Uh, yeah, check it, check it, check it. Organic intellectual. Uh, uh, revolution is perpetual. Yeah, organic intellectual. Revolution is perpetual. Hip hop's pioneers organically developed the elements to deal with the socio geopolitical circumstances of their communities. Unfortunately, by the late 1990s, um, hip hop had superficially become synonymous with gangster culture. What we're talking about here is the intersection between art and commerce, sex, drugs, violence, sell. So it is no surprise that corporations, major media outlets have co-opted hip hop to propagate these negative messages that sell so well. Hip hop re-education is an interdiscipl interdisciplinary approach to teaching and learning that utilizes the elements as pedagogy themselves. We encourage youth to commit to a craft. We encourage youth to invest in the artistic process. In doing so, developing their own voices, and in doing so, defining ways to create change within their communities. Today I will look more closely at the Bronx Berlin Connection, an intercultural exchange project, which has done just this. Brought kids together from Berlin and from New York to make music together and to talk about their issues. Die, die sich hier gerade treffen, kommen zum größten Teil aus ziemlich schwierigen Lebensumständen und äh, Lebensverhältnissen und sind es auch nicht unbedingt gewöhnt, über diese Umstände zu reden. Also haben auch oft keine Ansprechpartner. Und hier lernen sie sich halt kennen, arbeiten miteinander an Musik, äh, schreiben Zeilen und äh, schaffen es auch dadurch, sich Gehör zu verschaffen und treffen auch Leute, die sich für ihre, für ihre Geschichte interessieren. And the blood car is burgundy, like the sneaker on his feet. You already know that all of y'all receiving at the feet, and we at the airport. They didn't get a haircut, but they did. They got their hair short. Plenty more to snort when it comes to lines. You already know I do it off the time. Peep. This is where the story just begins. Bronx, Berlin, we gon' catch it like a sin. Stay flying in the sky, you can call me a bird. We gon' take it all over. Yup, that's my word. We gon' bang on now. The new age time. I mean, it's new age. It's my time. I stay on the rhyme. Stay on up on the ground. Skateboard on the move. Now catch up my time. Uh -huh. Oops. Let's slide over. Catch it aside. Feel alive right now. Illegal right by my side. Uh -huh. Got Mike over here. Camera signing all light. Beatbox in the house. Yup, that's all nice. But uh -huh. we gotta keep it moving. Time is money. And money is mine. So therefore, time is mine. Let's move. Berlin. <laughs> I've never been in a different country, so honestly, this is wonderful. This is a chance of a lifetime for me. <laughs> Gotta be honest, I didn't think I'd be coming out of No, why? Not what you expect from a dropout. <laughs> So before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's take a step back. We know that hip hop can trace its roots to the transatlantic trade and the oral traditions of West Africa. But I'll choose to start with the civil rights movement. As these voices of resistance were silenced and marginalized, youth were left with no option, um, little direction. Um, and it's pretty much a cause and effect situation. They turned to gangs, drugs, and violence. Middle class families 
want to leave the inner city. Men like Robert Moses, right? Complete construction proxy, uh, projects like the Cross Bronx Expressway. Allowing these middle class families to leave, but also physically destroying the landscape that these youth are growing up in. Um, along with government policies of redlining and planned shrinkage under the guise of urban renewal, there's a powder keg waiting to happen. Over a five year period from 1973 to 1978, over 30,000 fires were set in the South Bronx alone. And over a 10 year period in the 70s, the South Bronx lost 43,000 housing units. Which brings me to this image by Mel Rosenthal. Look at these young ladies. Look at their posture, their demeanor, overall energy, their smile. What do they have to be happy about? The hip hop elements are a communal symbolic response to deal with dire circumstances. And youth all over the world are turning to hip hop culture to tell their stories and to deal with their circumstances. I mean, let's face it, growing up in today's world is a traumatic experience. There are oppressed peoples all over the world. And if there's one thing that my travels have really proven to me is that hip hop really speaks most to this generation and is utilized most by this generation as a platform to develop their own identities and speak about the issues affecting their community. The Bronx Berlin connection, aside from getting kids to write multilingual cross-cultural poems, songs, and albums, really gives youth the platform, the tools necessary to define their alternative identity. It gives them the tools necessary to um, critique reaffirm and remix their cultural symbols that they already hold on to. And it's actually given them a new system of symbolic uh, status, one in which only they can participate and one which denies the validity of those courses of, of those discursive spheres that they feel excluded from. The Bronx Berlin Connection has created two albums, released dozens of music videos, mini documentaries, and has facilitated four cross-cultural exchange trips where we take New York kids to Berlin and bring Berlin kids here to New York. But whereas kids are most concerned about getting in the studio and you know, laying down that track or you know, getting on stage and rocking that verse, hip-hop re-educators, remember I'm talking about hip-hop remixed education, what we're most concerned about is the dialogue, the growth, and the understanding that develops from this process. Well, you know that I don't spit, but I hit these beats like I let the boys that won't let them know that I've got so much flow. I felt that this trip really was a little token of what I can get in life if I continue to apply myself. What do you think about this place? I think this is so cool and how they didn't allow gentrification to affect the culture of this place. I'm still appreciative for the experience. What was your first impression as you as you saw it? It's like a big culture shock because some of these things are similar to New York where we live. Like I felt like me going there, my whole outlook on things is very different. Bring me into something I never thought I would be. I'm living this life by being inspired by what life takes from me. It takes I like it. <laughs> I'm just so willing to learn more. I'm willing to just do more. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was just playing it back to you, but if you want to go. So what is needed? Um, I got four things, really. Um, first, we need a remix education system for these youth, one that values their knowledge, and one that really complicates modern day notions of standards. Um, two, in a world where these public spaces are constantly under attack, we actually need to fight that. We need to give these youth a space where they can really feel free and safe to explore and express their identities. Third, funding, right? But that's the easy part. We need to actually make sure that programs like the Bronx Berlin Connection can implement the infrastructure to ensure sustainability. And fourth, to really empower a true multitude of voices, we need to legitimize the role of the organic intellectual. That is the expert from the community and the culture. It's no longer enough to give voice to the voiceless, because there's no such thing as a voiceless individual. You know, I really appreciate this platform given to me today, but there are hundreds of individuals, thousands of individuals doing this work on the ground level. They need to have a similar platform. 
if hip hop has taught us one thing, it's that messages like those in Marley Marl's The Message do make a difference. We must learn from others' cultural experiences. We must commit to transforming our own practices based on those lessons. We must dedicate ourselves to making art that intends to have an impact. In the words of Margaret Mead, a small, thoughtful group of people can change the world, especially if they're stationed worldwide and they share the common language of hip hop. Thank you.